Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We begin with late breaking news, a shooting southeast of downtown. Officers were called out to the 400 block of Montrose around 630 this morning. That's near South New Braunfels Avenue. So right now we don't have much information, but we do know that San Antonio Police Chief William McManus is at the scene. And so we're waiting to get an update from him. We'll bring you more information as it becomes available. Good morning. It's eight o'clock on Sunday, January 2nd. Good morning. Happy first second day or second first, day of second the new year. And first this is how we day. bring it in. You know, it's funny. We say we feel like it's the first day of the new year because I think everyone was off yesterday enjoying. Right. I went, Sleeping in. I went to resetting. the zoo. Mike, it was what, 80 degrees here in San Antonio? 79 to be exact, yeah. Wow. And now the we difference. have dropped down even further. It is down to 27 degrees Urgh. here in town. It's a beautiful start this morning. We've got lots of clear skies out there. Absolutely gorgeous. Don't let that fool you, though, because, again, look at these temperatures. We are at 27 here in town, 25 Ball Verde, 21 right now. Lost Maples Comfort's at 22 degrees. And just about, well, everybody on that map is at freezing or below. And then we still have a very good wind out there. Winds about 15, 20 miles per hour gusting on top of that. Wind chill temperatures. It is 14 in town. Same thing. Randolph 13 Ball Verde 7 Kerrville 6 is what it feels like right now at Lost Maples 15 in Hondo and the wind is definitely going to be an issue throughout the, the course of the day. Freeze warnings remain in effect for the next couple of hours up until 10 o'clock and that's also the situation tomorrow. This goes back into effect at midnight and up until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning and that's going to be for the areas that don't hit widespread freezing tonight. Like for instance, Bear County, it's not going to be in the freeze warning tomorrow because we've already hit freezing. It's for the first time you hit freezing widespread. 44 degrees today at noon, 50 high temperature today. It's still going to be windy all day long. Again, we hit uh, even colder temperatures tomorrow morning. A little bit of a warm up, another front later on in the week. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah. Thank you, Mike. Warming centers have opened up for people who don't have anywhere to go during these cold days and nights. An emergency warming shelter for the homeless opened at the church under the bridge last night. The church was able to fit 40 sleeping bags in the main sanctuary. Normally, that number is 90, but with COVID-19 protocols, it forced the church to spread out. The plans to open the emergency shelter were made quickly when executive director of Church Under the Bridge, Diane Talbot, saw temperatures were expected to drop. She knew it was necessary. We may not have as much of a response, but for the people that do know that they want to get out of the cold, we want to be available to them. The church under the bridge will be opening again today as an emergency warming shelter. They're located at 724 Chestnut Street. That's near the Hay Street Bridge. Another shelter opening today is the Life Restored Church. They're located at 400 Arbor Place, west of I-10 and North Frio Street. New this morning, the strong winds early this morning helped spread the flames at a house fire on the city's west side. Firefighters received the call just after 1.30 uh, this morning. Heavy smoke and fire was coming from a house on Sylvia Avenue. That's south of San Fernando Cemetery between Castroville Road and Highway 90. Everyone inside the home was able to get out safely and no one was injured. The cause of the fire is unknown. Other top stories this morning, a woman is dead and five others injured after a three vehicle crash on the city's northwest side last night. The crash happened just after 630 near Culebra in Zerzamora. Witnesses told police they saw a red truck speeding and possibly run a red light before crashing into a silver truck and a Jeep. A woman in the silver truck died at the scene. She has yet to be identified from the three vehicles. Four people were taken to University Hospital and one person has been taken to Bamsey. And Bear County Sheriff's deputies at the scene of a fatal crash yesterday evening on 281 South and 1604. It happened around 645 p.m. yesterday. Information is limited, but we know it involved a truck, car and motorcycle. Deputies say the truck and car crashed into each other. And while they were waiting for help, the motorcyclist crashed into them. The motorcyclist was pronounced dead at the scene. It is unclear if the other drivers were injured or not. A family is starting the new year mourning the loss of their loved one, 28-year-old Valentin Gonzalez. He was shot and killed at his apartment complex off of Warsbach Road on Thursday. His loved one spoke to John Paul Barajas about what happened and how they'll be remembering him. 
An argument turning into a fatal shooting left 28-year-old Valentin Gonzalez dead. It all taking place at an apartment complex on Wurzbach near Babcock Road on December 30th. He leaves behind eight kids, his wife, and his mother, who spoke to us through her pain. I love you, baby. I love you and I miss you so much. I can't see if I could go without you. According to police, 18-year-old Jordan Eden allegedly shot Gonzalez, went on the run, and then turned himself in later that day. Police are still investigating the case, but according to Gonzalez's wife, the entire argument started because Eaton's dog came towards them and they simply pet it. Says that you can't touch my dog. I don't with you. I don't with any of you. Brittany Gonzalez adds after going back and forth, Eden flashed his gun. They tried to ignore him, but the dog came back, and that's when he allegedly started shooting. He shoots at me two inches from my face, and he goes and tangles him to the ground. He cocks the gun and shoots. He falls to the ground. And he looks at me and says, I love you, mama. Gonzalez was rushed to the hospital, later dying from his injuries. His brother, Timothy, got the news, but wasn't able to make it to say goodbye. I rushed over here, man. I don't even live in town. I live out of town, man. I drove as fast as I could. The traffic was hell. I couldn't get here in time. I'm sorry, brother. The entire Gonzalez family in tears. One of Valentin's young stepdaughters also asking if she could speak with us. It's really hard for me to sleep because I miss him. And I want to tell you, Daddy, I really love you and I miss you. And that was John Paul Barajas reporting. Other top stories. Search efforts are continuing into the new year for three-year-old Lena Kill. Tomorrow will mark two weeks since the little girl was last seen. Her last known location was at the apartment complex where she lived with her parents on Fredericksburg Road near Warsbach. That was back on December 20th. San Antonio police and FBI officials have been working day and night to find Lena. They say they don't have any information that someone took her, so they are still treating this as a missing persons case, not an abduction. She was last seen wearing a black jacket, red dress, and black shoes. Anyone with information about her disappearance is asked to call SAPD's missing person unit. That number on the bottom of your screen right now, 210-207-7660. Now to a traffic alert to be aware of if you're going to be driving in the Bernie area along I-10 tomorrow. Text not will have part of the access road closed in order to construct a new eastbound frontage road approaching US 87. Eastbound traffic on the access road near Manger Springs will be detoured onto I-10 using the new entrance ramp and then return to the access road using exit 543, the scenic loop exit. This closure will begin tomorrow at 9 a.m. The whole project is estimated to be finished by spring. 23 new state laws are now in effect. The new laws range from a slight change, the exemption on homestead taxes for disabled veterans to a requirement on large cities to hold an election before reducing or reallocating funding for law enforcement agencies. You can read more about these new laws right now on KSAT.com. In your morning headlines, Kentucky hit by severe weather again less than a month after those deadly tornadoes. The governor of Kentucky declaring a state of emergency after a powerful storm caused flash floods, power outages and property damage, including from a possible tornado yesterday. There were no immediate reports of any injuries or deaths. Now, 808, 27 degrees. It's only getting colder by the minute. Oh my gosh, Burr. All right, still ahead on GMSA, a look back at Hollywood's beloved Betty White's career and life after her passing at the age of 99. And as we remember a life lost, we welcome new life in the new year. Coming up after the break, meet the first baby born in 2022 here in San Antonio. Like Jonathan said, it's just getting colder. That temperature just keeps dropping this morning. We are 27 degrees. Can you guys believe it? We were almost at 80 yesterday here in the Alamo City. Mike is in for Sarah this Sunday morning. He'll have her forecast when we come back. We'll say hello to the first baby born in the new year here in San Antonio. This is So I draw with my mouth. I've got like a short pencil. We might not have a lot of Buffalo Bills here right now, but that's right now we're looking at the story of this young boy who uh, has a rare disorder and is able to accomplish just a tremendous amount of things there. 
11-year-old Grayson has a rare disorder that prevents him from using his arms or legs, but that doesn't stop him from living a full life, including dreams of even playing football someday. It changed my life. It really did. I mean, like, I was like, wow. And after Grayson's teacher shared his artwork on Facebook, Bill's fans went crazy for it. And now, thanks to generous donations, the young fan is heading to today's game against the Falcons. Josh, I'm going to be in the Bud Light Club on Sunday, and I hope to meet you there. Oh, that's there such a it. sweet story. <laughs> Definitely. Well, All right, it's 824 and 27 degrees. It's still ahead on JMSA. COVID cases continuing to rise and students get ready to head back to school. Tomorrow we'll have the latest coming up. A lot of questions still unanswered after a man shows up to a relative's home with cuts on him. What we've learned so far about the case that's coming up after the break. But before we go, go to break, we want to go back to that late breaking news. A shooting southeast of downtown. Two people are dead and two others are injured. Officers were called out to the 400 block of Montrose around 630 this morning. That's near South New, uh, South New Braunfels Avenue. Right now, investigators have a lot of information to sort through, but Police Chief William McManus said he believes this shooting was drug related. He says there are two scenes they are processing. The two people killed were a man and a woman believed to be in their 20s. Their identities have not been released. Another man and woman were also injured. Officers trying to talk to them to get more information will continue to follow this story and bring you the latest on air and online at KSAT.com. Good morning, San Antonio. I'm Jonathan Cotto. And I'm Sarah Costa. It is Sunday, January 2nd. Happy second day of 2022. And what a way to start it. <laughs> what a way to start it. It's exactly how I wanted it, but I think I'm starting to take it back. It's yeah. really, really cold. No, it's really cold. too, too cold. Mike, 27 degrees. Yeah. This is wild. Mm -hmm. We have dropped down 50 degrees from the high temperature yesterday. More than fit, yeah, and that doesn't even take into account the uh, the wind chill as of right now. But yeah, we are down to uh, 27. Wind is out of the northwest. These are sustained winds. It's gusting on top of that, 20 miles per hour. And the dew point, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere is at 14. The dew point temperature, which is about 50 to 55 degrees lower than what it was. It was very humid yesterday, of course, and we're only going to make it up into uh, the upper 40s. Maybe we hit 50 later on this afternoon. As far as the allergens, the the updated count has not come out yet. Uh, the aquifer, this was yesterday's reading, went up two tenths of a foot, and uh, mountain cedar had dropped down significantly from Friday's numbers down to 8,000, still on the high side. But of course, that was taken before the front moved on through here. It's been very, very windy overnight, so that may be shaking up those mountain cedar trees. As far as the wind gusts around there, about 30 miles per hour, 25, 30, 30 miles per hour, and um, Wind chill temperatures, 8 in Kerrville, 14 in town, 13 right now, Balverde and New Braunfels. Freeze warning is in effect till 10 o'clock this morning and then goes back into effect at midnight up until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And like I said, Mountain Cedar is on the high side. It's freezing this morning. That kind of says it all. Sunny, cold, windy all day long, so wind chills will definitely be a factor all day long. And then even colder tomorrow morning, mid-20s, and then we'll make it up to the low 50s in the afternoon. We'll warm up a little bit toward midweek, then another cold front moves through here on Thursday. And, of course, Thursday, and somebody had questioned why I have a Christmas tree there on Thursday that has nothing to do with any sort of brush pickup or anything like that, Christmas tree pickup. That is the, the 12th day of Christmas, the Epiphany. So that's why I had put that there on the uh extended forecast. So any more fronts after the one Thursday? We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah. Thank you, Mike. And sticking with that cold weather, Mike was just talking about District 1 Councilman Mario Bravo is asking for coat donations for children in need at the Rory Mas Youth Alternatives and People of Corazon Ministries. You can drop off new or gently used coats from now through Friday at any of these five locations that are on your screen right now. The sizes they need range from Children small to adult, double, uh, double extra large. And you this morning, a man shows up to a family member's home with cuts to his face and hands, and now police are trying to figure out what happened to him. Officers were called to a house on Dolores Street near Hortensia Avenue on the west side around midnight. They found the injured man, and he was taken to the hospital for treatment. In their initial investigation, police don't believe the cutting happened at the home on Dolores Street. Right now, they're trying to figure out where the attack happened and who is responsible. 
Top stories this morning. San Antonio police are investigating a stabbing attack where one person was sent to the hospital. This incident happened around 3.30 yesterday afternoon at the intersection of Fredericksburg Road and West Woodlawn Avenue. Witnesses told police two men were seen fighting in the street, so they called 911. By the time officers arrived, a man was found with multiple stab wounds to the torso. He was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. Police did detain someone at the scene, but it is unclear if they are the suspect. And police are searching for two suspects who allegedly opened fire at a vehicle with still a person inside. The shooting happened around 3.30 yesterday morning in the parking lot of a bar on UTSA Boulevard near Vance Jackson Road in I-10. Police say the man was sitting in the vehicle when another vehicle pulled up slowly with the headlights off and started shooting. The man inside was hit several times and taken to University Hospital in critical condition. No other injuries were reported. And to the pandemic now and the surge in Omicron infections across the country as so many parents get to set their kids back to school tomorrow after the holiday break. ABC's Phil Lipoff has the latest from New York. This morning, COVID-19 outbreaks exploding across the country. Just this week, the U.S. reporting more than a record 2.2 million infections. At least 11 states sounding the alarm, calling on the National Guard to help with the Omicron-fueled surge in cases. Texas Governor Greg Abbott requesting more COVID testing sites and medical personnel as the state sees a spike in hospitalizations. In Michigan, hospitals are overwhelmed. Today is not one of the better days. There are a lot of patients on ventilators, long wait times in our emergency department. Patients waiting hours for ICU beds to open up. They're sicker. They're younger. A lot of them don't have any pre-existing conditions, um, and it's scary. We have so many patients in the ICU right now that we are all pulling extra shifts and coming in extra days to work. As pediatric hospital admissions from COVID climb to an all-time high, the FDA could authorize boosters for 12 to 15-year-olds as soon as possible, offering extra protection for school-age kids. Some school districts bracing for a potential spike in cases as students return to school this week. I think as a parent, we're kind of having this here we go again kind of moment with this new variant. I think it's just better to be safe than sorry and keep the masks on. A rise in cases prompting schools in Atlanta and a district outside of New York City to welcome students back online. Many schools around New Jersey also going to remote learning. In California, the Castro Valley Unified School District passing out COVID testing kits to parents so that all students can test before classes start on Monday. We want to make sure that everyone um, takes a test before they come to school and so that if someone is symptomatic that they can quarantine safely and we can keep the rest of the school community safe. All over the U.S., people waiting for testing in long lines. I've seen wait times up to three hours. This isn't just testing to be able to travel and be able to see family anymore. Now it's becoming testing in need because people are becoming infectious. Many Americans trying to get their hands on hard to find rapid test kits. In Connecticut, Governor Ned Lamont addressing the low supply and announcing a new shipment will be distributed. We have 426,000 rapid tests right here and more to come. And this morning, a federal judge in Louisiana ruled that the Biden administration overstepped Congress when it required all teachers in the federally funded Head Start program be vaccinated by January 31st. That same ruling also said the government cannot require kids in that program two and older to wear masks indoors. Phil Lipoff, ABC News, New York. And the FDA is expected to authorize booster shots for 12 to 15 year olds this week, possibly as soon as tomorrow. The CDC says its authorization would follow quickly. In your morning headlines, President Joe Biden will speak with the president of Ukraine today regarding tensions in Russia. The call comes several days after President Biden urged Russian President Vladimir Putin to ease the military crisis on Ukraine's border. The president said he made it clear in his call with Putin there will be, quote, heavy price to pay if Russia were to invade Ukraine. A White House official says his call with Ukraine's president, Biden plans to reaffirm U.S. support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Officials in Colorado say nearly 1,000 homes and other structures were destroyed after that huge wildfire northwest of Denver. Three people have still not been seen. Investigators are still trying to find the cause of the fire that started off Thursday. The wildfire blackened entire neighborhoods in the area between Denver and Boulder, Colorado.
And federal officials are warning of the threats on the upcoming anniversary of the January 6th U.S. Capitol riot. They say there aren't any current specific or credible threats, but that lone wolf offenders are the most likely to exploit the upcoming anniversary. Their assessment says conspiracy theories about election fraud continue to resonate among domestic extremists and could again inspire some to promote or commit violence. Scary moments for 21 people who were stuck thousands of feet in the air on a, in a tram in New Mexico Friday overnight into Saturday, but they are all now safely back on the ground. The passengers had been stuck on the Sandia Peak Aerial Tramway overnight Friday because of icy conditions. Officials say the last person was safely back on the ground Yesterday afternoon, most of the passengers trapped on board were employees at a restaurant on top of the Sandia Mountains who were ending their shift Friday night. Thank goodness they're all back. Thank goodness. I would See. not want to be one of those passengers. Oh my but gosh. Everyone's safe. <laughs> yeah. Good news. Well, it's 836, 27 degrees outside. And coming up next on GMSA, if you're ready for a new you this new year, we have some tips to help you get back control of your life. I think the weather said new year, new me. <laughs> 27 <laughs> degrees this morning at 839. How long will these freezing temps stick around for? Mike will let us know when we come back. All right, we say it every year, another year, another chance to start fresh in 2022 could be the year of you. And between the pandemic, finances, job insecurities, and caring for family last year, it's been a rough year, but this year, you can start a reboot. And how can you take back control of your life? Eric Hernandez has the answer so you can thrive in the new year. Always think about the future and that you can always improve. Always Experts say the first step to taking control is to make yourself a priority. Be disciplined about your me time. The New York Post reports that in a 24-hour day, the average American only gets about 43 minutes to do whatever they want. Allowing yourself to unwind every day can help reduce stress and prevent burnouts. Next, control stimuli around you. Research shows that having a phone present while you work distracts you and interferes with your capacity to think. Associate selectivity, set boundaries with difficult people. Log out of negative online interactions and be conscious of how you might be vulnerable to groupthink. Also be a learner. Make it a habit to try new things and explore outside your comfort zone. Say yes to experiences you would usually forego. This will build confidence, make you happier and more productive. But don't be afraid to say no. You don't have to explain yourself. Actually, that's something I've become very good at. Uh, saying no with no explanation needed. No is a full sentence. I try to say no with as much humility and grace as possible. Eric Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. There you have it. Well, a lot of things to learn and imply and just kind of live life with a little bit more intention. You know, right? we're saying Jonathan's way too nice. He I, needs to, I need to be need more to say less, no. less nice, right? Yeah. And Mike, some people are saying no to the 28 degrees right now. It's oh, so yeah. different. I yeah. mean, some people have been waiting for this, though, but. I thought I yeah, liked this, it, but I'm not too sure about that. It's a little too cold. This time, I don't know. Yesterday, walking around, and it was kind of humid out and on the 1st of January, so I, I kind of like this, but I'm also inside right now, so if I step outside, that may be a whole different story. All right, it seems like it's been a long time since the bus has been warmed up, but boy, tomorrow morning, definitely you're going to want to take some time to uh, warm up the bus, warm up the uh, the car, and uh, it's going to be, uh, I I beg your pardon, I the just explainer on there, I was in a hurry to get this graphic put up there. So 53 degrees, sunny skies. We're not going to have mostly cloudy and a sprinkle tomorrow. My apologies on that one. Plus, I was updating the uh, pollen count, which just came out. And Mountain Cedar went up from yesterday's reading. It was about 8,000 yesterday, now back up to 10,460. And mold also went up thanks to all of the humidity we had here around here last night. Now, as far as... Uh, KSAC Connect Pictures, this is another beautiful, beautiful picture over there around uh, Woodlawn Lake yesterday. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect shot. All right, this morning, it's gorgeous out there if you want to go for a walk, but definitely bundle up.
We're at 27 right now, freezing at Stinson. Most everybody, with the exception of Pleasanton, is at or well below freezing. 24 in Kerrville, as well as Comfort, Bandera. 20 is the cold spot there in Lost Maples. Wind is very strong, and it's going to stay pretty windy all day long with these wind gusts, uh, about 32 miles per hour here in town, 35 at uh, Stinson, as well as Kerrville. So wind chill temperatures, it is down to 4 now for a wind chill in Lost Maples, 14 out there at the airport, 13 in New Braunfels. And as far as dew points, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere, of course, yesterday it was very, very humid out there. And those dew point temperatures have dropped down 50 to 55 degrees compared to this time yesterday. That's how dry the air is out there. Plus, we've got really, really dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. The water vapor imagery, this darker shade, and then also kind of that um, that brownish tannish shade means that it's bone dry upstairs. And so we're going to have some gorgeous, gorgeous blue skies out there today. And as far as the humidity, it will try to come back into the picture a little bit by Tuesday, Wednesday, and then sort of peaking a little bit. But another front is going to move through here on Thursday. So that's going to knock any slight return of the humidity out of the picture and then also knock temperatures back down. So even after tomorrow, we're looking at another freeze by as of right now by Friday morning as the Gee whiz this morning, 36 degrees below zero at International Falls. The actual air temperature and most of the country right now obviously is well below freezing. And we do have wind chill temperatures. Five St. Louis, negative seven as close by as Oklahoma City. And once again, it feels like four right now over there in Lost Maples. So if you are heading out this morning, uh, bundle up and it's going to stay pretty chilly all day long. 44 degrees, sunny, windy. So we'll still have wind chills to deal with. And then later on today, we may make it back up to 50. It's going to be kind of hard to do. It's going to be a gorgeous day, though. So if you're outside looking or inside looking out, I should say freeze warnings in effect up until 10 o'clock. And then this is going to go back into effect at midnight up until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And this will then be for it's in effect right now for tomorrow morning. But uh, for instance, Bear County will not be included in this for tomorrow since we've already hit freezing. That's why the Hill Country is not included in this freeze warning. It's just for the the first widespread freeze in any given county. 25 tomorrow morning, 53 in the afternoon. We'll make it all the way up to 74 by Wednesday. That next front moves on through here. And yes, Thursday is the epiphany, the 12th day of Christmas. The Three Kings Day. Three Kings Day. And so that's when you should have your tree down. By but then. when will you be taking your tree down? If not Thursday, by the weekend. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll give it a little bit. Maybe, Keep it up. Maybe, maybe a little easier to do by the, by the weekend as a yeah. weekend has. But that's why that tree is up there. It has nothing to do with any sort of... Uh, Christmas tree collection or brush collection or anything. So thank you, Mike. Sure. Well, the three pointer with just 1.9 seconds left in overtime gave the Pistons the win over the Spurs last night. The final score 117 to 116. We'll have highlights in our later newscast and tonight on instant replay. The Spurs next game is Tuesday against the Raptors. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. And here's a look at today's NFL games. The Texans at the 49ers and the Cardinals at the Cowboys. Both 3 o'clock games. We'll also have those highlights later today. Go Cowboys. And in college football, Sikkim Bears. The Baylor Bears beat Ole Miss 21-7 to in the Sugar Bowl. I know my parents and brother excited about that. They went to Baylor. Again, the sports guys will have highlights from this game during our 5.30 newscast. And don't forget to tune in to Instant Replay tonight at 11, right after the night beat, where our sports team will have the highlights, break down all the top games, and all that information you need to know in sports. Well, 849, 28 degrees outside. Texas Lotto numbers pick three, three, one, four, fireball four, daily four, six, eight, five, nine, fireball two. Cash five, eight, 11, 15, 18, and 29. Texas Lotto one, 16, 19, 39, 42, and 46. Powerball 6, 12, 39, 48, 50, Powerball seven. This was the big 500 million. Don't believe there was a winner at this time. Power play two. And the news you need to know before you go, two people are dead and two others injured in a shooting that police chief William McManus believes was drug related. It's up around 630 this morning. Officers were called out to an apartment complex on Montrose near South New Braunfels Avenue. That's on the city's southeast side. The identities of the victims, a man and woman, have not been released. Police are trying to talk to another man and woman who were injured to get more information. 
And strong winds helped spread the flames at a house fire on the city's west side early this morning. Firefighters received the call just after 1.30 a.m. Heavy smoke and fire was coming from a house on Sylvia Avenue. That's south of San Fernando Cemetery between Castroville Road and Highway 90. Everyone inside the home was able to get out safely and no one was injured. The cause of the fire is unknown. All right, let's end the show on a lighter note. Check out some of these unique New Year celebrations from around the country. This is in Plymouth, Wisconsin, where they do a cheese drop. That's a cheese, that's cheese right there instead of a ball drop at midnight, according to local news there. Uh, Plymouth is considered the cheese capital of the world. Wow. Oh, it's like the big cheese heads that they wear. Yeah. <laughs> and in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, they dropped a 400 pound peep at midnight. <laughs> That's right there on your screen. I'm not making this up. The peeps check drop is the highlight of Peeps Fest, a two day festival which celebrates the fun and excitement of the peeps. Looks like the peeps on fire there. All right. And maybe not as unique as a cheese or a peep drop, but still something different. This is in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. They rang the new year with an anchor drop and the anchor actually dropped twice, once at 7 p.m. PM for kids or people like me and Mike who don't stay up till midnight. <laughs> so they don't have to wake up so to wait up so late and then again at midnight for the adults. Let me just watch it in New, in, uh, New Zealand and call it a day. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> hey, uh, beautiful day, but boy, it's cold out there. Oh, we've warmed up to 30 now. Veritable heat wave, but we uh, did hit 27 <laughs> on the hourly readings, and we still have uh, pretty strong winds out there, so wind chill is still uh, at 4 at uh, Lost Maples, 18 here in town. Freeze warning till 10 o'clock, and then that's going to go back into effect for tomorrow morning, overnight. It's going to be a longer freezing period, below freezing tonight, so keep that in mind. 50 for a high temperature today, and we're going to be down down into the mid 20s tomorrow. So again, don't forget tonight because it'll be below freezing right about midnight here in town up until about mid morning. Yep, cover your plants, bring your pets yep. and cover your pipes and electric hey, blankets. Hey, Johnson, thank you so much for joining us Thank this you. Morning. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Sarah. Y'all have a good Sunday. Back to school tomorrow.